Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse Podcast, a podcast that supports local by going to the kind with the kind in the kind's truck to eat the kind. I'm your host, Kamak Diaz, and hey, you know the kind. Ah, no worries. Bumbai learned. I'm so stoked for this episode with this local brother, but before we introduce him, I want to say a huge mahalo to our sponsor for this episode, 7 Eleven Hawaii. If you want to sponsor our podcast just like 7 Eleven Hawaii, hit us up. And if you love supporting local, make sure you check us out on Patreon and our website, hawaiiverse.com. Okay, let's introduce our awesome guest today. Yeah. Our guest today is an actor who grew up in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii. He is a filmmaker, actor, director, writer, producer, comedian, and popular YouTuber. He is most notable for making comedy sketches, parodies, music videos, and impersonating famous people and characters such as Captain Jack Sparrow, Ace Ventura, and The Grinch. He is one of my favorite YouTubers and social media personalities of all time. He is the one dollar kama aina with one of the best pigeon accents out there. His name is Alexander Dane Farnham. Hello, Alex. Welcome Hello. to the podcast. How How's doing? it going? Hey. <laughs> it's great <laughs> to meet awesome, you. That was awesome. Awesome intro, bro. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's all true. I'm just speaking facts. I'm just reading what you do. <laughs> oh, true, true. So, yeah. Awesome intro for a very talented person. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'm so stoked you're here. You're one of the OGs, you know, just when I think of the inception of YouTube, I, I think of a certain people, mm-hmm. or a certain amount of people. And you're at the top of that list, you know, especially from Thank the you. Big Island, right? Yeah. Ryan yep. Higa and you. Yeah, that, yeah. Though you, you too just you, you dominated the space. Thanks. Man. Yeah, and Thank then you know there's other YouTubers back then, Jenna Marbles, that that weird kid Fred. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Smosh, I remember watching. Smosh, Smosh. I grew yep. up with YouTube. I mean, mm-hmm. um, Derek Comedy. Do do you know Derek Comedy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charles yeah. Can't be, yeah, be yeah, on, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all yeah. that. It was just such a cool time to you know grow up. Yeah, that, it know? was. It was. Yeah, and you're part of that. You're part of that history. So it's it's super cool. I can't, I'm still <laughs> stoked to be a part of it. I can't believe, you know, it, I got in at, at a good time, I guess, you know, I was yeah, really lucky. One of the first to market. Grateful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on. Oh, so I have a lot of questions for you, but before we get started, I always like to start at the beginning and ask the classic Hawaii questions. Where are you from? Where are you grad? And what was it like growing up? Well, I'm from Kona on the Big Island, and uh, I graduated <laughs> uh, uh, from Kalakehe, kind of. It's weird. It's kind of, it's... Uh, I, I went my first two years Cal Calcare High School, and then I sort of got asked to uh, not come back the next year because <laughs> me and me and my friend, we were kind of class clowns, mm. and we were kind of disruptive. So then I went to this other stu- uh, school, uh, Hawaii Academy, and it was interesting. But I get to say, so I guess technically I, gr- I graduated from Hawaii, but I graduated top 10 in my class. Because there's only 10 of us. So, <laughs> hey, yeah. flex that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put that on your resume. Maybe, maybe top three. Maybe top three. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember the grades. So. That's funny. All right. So, well, what were you doing when you were growing up? Did you play sports? Were you into academics? Or did you always do these skits? Yeah. Um, let me. So, I did I did a lot of tennis. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, growing up, I, I did uh, karate, I did soccer, Boy Scouts. Um, baseball but i was kind of i was kind of athletic in those other ones but but tennis i excelled in mm-hmm. so i th- that probably seven years of my life i was on the courts like almost every day so i was uh, i was kind of being molded into being like a tennis pro um and that's where i wanted to go or where i thought i wanted to go and then when i hit um when, right when i was about to go into high school I saw my other friends and, you know, they were like skateboarding and like punk rock and like, yeah, and we <laughs> film videos. So I, I was like, oh, I put all, I put so much into tennis. You know, I was traveling and doing tournaments, but as a 13 year old little kid, I couldn't like go to sleep that night because I was so stressed out about winning the game the next day. So just one day, I kind of walked off the court and I decided to. Um, you know, not really do that and be, you know, a kid or a teenager. Mm. Um, but I, I was all, I was always kind of into filming my own, my own stuff. I had, um, my family had, uh, old, uh, camcorder. I think, I think it recorded on the VHS, like the, the one that they had. Mm-hmm. And I remember making little, uh, 
sour Skittles commercials. Just really weird. I was a really yeah. odd, odd kid growing up. But I would just be in my my room, and I would like I didn't even have sour Skittles, but I would take Skittles in, and I would like make a weird face toward t- towards the camera. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, uh, when I hit high school, I was kind of like the the kid in my my friend group that had the camera and I would film everyone skating because I wasn't the best skater. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't, I could, I think I've probably kick flipped, landed a solid kick flip like a handful of times. Um, but it, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I think sports and doing those after school things at an early age definitely helped me a lot. You know, it's always, it's always good for a kid growing, growing yeah, up like that. You know? Yeah. Extra yeah. Curricular, Kona yeah. has a, has a bit of a um, skate culture too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually just saw on someone, my friend shared an old photo from uh, a skate park that we grew up uh, skating in mm-hmm. and it's like long gone. I think it's actually Ola Brew now. You oh, heard no, of Ola I, Brew? Yeah. 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 I think that's where they're at now, but it was an old warehouse mm-hmm. And I think I have a couple of videos of myself dropping in and just doing the splits, <laughs> never, never landing it. Um, but yeah, that whole, I think that helped a lot. The skate culture. Um, and I think a lot of kids that grew up in that, in that time through skating, you had like Tom green, you had the skate videos and stuff like that. And that sort of, that's kind of what pushed me into always having a camera and making funny stuff because it wasn't always just skating. It was, it was little skits in between and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. that's something you kind of picked up as a as a hobby as a skill. But you're kind you just like innately funny, huh? I you're don't know. Cla- I try my best. That that accent, the the vision accent, the local Brada accent yeah. is so good. I mean, we were just talking about the Brada auditions. Oh yeah, yeah, my, yeah. Me and my friends would crack off with those ones the jurassic oh, park one spider-man peter spider-man yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> the, yeah take Spider-Man. the dna from the mosquito yeah. <laughs> like, that, oh, we would know all the words to it <laughs> yeah that's so th- it's actually interesting because uh that's almost when i started doing those kinds of things a lot of it i think came from my tennis coach Oh really? Yeah. He's on local brada. He was he was a local brada, <laughs> yeah. and he was like, "Come on, get the ball! What, what are you doing?" And he, I remember he was he would always say like, "Uh, let me think about it." Uh, no, you know, just <laughs> stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, you know, I looked up to him and and the older kids, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I think he was kind of. I got some, you know, that. Imp- impersonation of i'm yeah. kind of doing him a little bit yeah and you're really yeah. good at impersonations thanks right thank you. so yeah. i mean i feel like when when you can just mimic uh, p- other people like that's such a good skill to have right yeah <laughs> i mean i i watched a lot of tv and movies i i grew up watching um jim carrey all the time mm-hmm. you know just over and over yeah, again and you do a really good ace ventura you even gotta look like him too thanks yeah Th- that's <laughs> the weird thing you know i think i watched him so much as a kid <laughs> actually in um in elementary school i would tell the kids that like oh you seen mask oh yeah well when he when he has the green mask on that was actually me and i'm on stilts and so that's <laughs> actually me that's not him and then they were like no 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 and then i had an- another thing i would tell the kids uh that oh yeah jim carrey uh he actually lives down the street he's my uncle (laughs) and some of the kids thought it you know it was true for a little bit and they're like no that's that's not true but that's funny yeah yeah so how did you get into youtube i mean so you started filming your friends with Mm -hmm. a camera and then how did you start making youtube's uh so so youtube um basically i i went to well i always wanted to act right Mm -hmm. Uh, and growing up on the big island, there was really nothing, you know, I think there was one audition my whole like life up until 17 or 18. And it was an audition. You were auditioning to maybe be a part of a a talent agency. Mm -hmm. So it was a fake audition. Um, and so I started filming my own stuff and people said I had a knack for, editing and filming filmmaking i actually i made my first documentary uh as a freshman in high school i got pulled out of high school to make a a documentary for ymca's uh free diving international free diving cup Mm -hmm. uh and 
so I was always kind of behind the camera at the same time. And so when I, when I graduated, I could either kind of go to an acting school or I could go to film school. And at that time, a lot of people were promoting film schools. Mm -hmm. You know, you would see it all over the place on online. And I always knew what I wanted to do. Um, you know, it was always either acting or something in film. And uh, Los Angeles Film School had an immersion program that only took a year. So I was like, okay, well, you know, my other friends are all going to college for three, four years. Uh, you know, I'm just going to do this for a year and just start, you know, trying mm -hmm. to get into that. And went to film school. I, I, since I had been doing it for that long, I didn't learn that much. I learned like a few little tricks here and there, but I, when film school was done, I decided that I was going to go back to the big Island, but I, I had a friend who he's actually one of the, he was a producer, uh, director, uh, of workaholics. Oh, I love that. Show. You know that show? Yeah. yeah. So he was my editing teacher and they were, he had told me that they were, I had found out that they were basically making short, funny films and getting paid for it. And this was oh, before. They used to have more stuff on YouTube, I remember. Yeah, yeah, but before YouTube, there was this site called Super Deluxe. Oh, okay. And so they were doing it. This other, they call them comedy troops. Mm -hmm. It's just groups of guys that, you know, make funny stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were getting paid, I don't know how much, like it could have been 100, 200, 300, to make a five minute funny video for this website. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, you know, just, just get. I was like, how do, how do I do that? And he said, like, the number one thing, just get your stuff in front of as many people as you can. So when I went back to Big Island, uh, I started entering all these video contests. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I got lucky at this point, too, because there were so many video contests, like choke. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think I did about 70 in one year. And these are all um, outside of Hawaii? Uh, yeah. In, in, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they were all... I, uh, there was websites that posted, you know, there was like Swiffer Sweeper and um, Best Buy and mm. these little video contests. So I entered all of them and a lot of them, uh, the requirement was upload the video to YouTube so we can view it and judge it to see mm. if you win or not. And so that's, I had to start a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So this is around 06, 07. Yeah, yeah. Because before, I think I uploaded all my stuff on MySpace. Yeah. Yeah, so. Classic. Shout out to MySpace. Yeah, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I was uploading everything onto YouTube and I kind of started to build an audience on there because you, you maybe you have between 25 or 100 people enter a film, uh, a video contest. You're, you're going to see you know, the competition or you're going to see the top three or the winners. Mm -hmm. So I think I started kind of creating like a little bit of uh, a following from those people. Cause I would see the same people too, in some of these contests mm -hmm. and I like their videos. I would watch their stuff too and subscribe to them. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it started. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, uh, my friend, I had the $1 video, which a lot of people don't know. It's I had the original is like a lot longer. Oh really? Yeah, and it's I don't know why it's I have it in HD like it's a higher higher quality, but the one that I uploaded is like I don't know super low quality. <laughs> I think it, it adds to the it appeal adds to of it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, my friend Mark he kept telling me to upload it. I was like I don't know I don't know, and then I did, and I remember going to the dentist office, and my friend's mom that I went to school with, she knew who I, who I was, you know, growing up and she's like, Oh, I, we saw your video. And then the other ladies in the, in the dentist's office, th they all came up to me like, Oh, can you sign the dollar? And I was like, what? Uh -huh. yeah, how you guys saw that? And then that kept happening. And so I just jumped into YouTube, kept doing YouTube videos and I liked doing lip syncs mm -hmm. because it was really know, big in the beginning of YouTube. Yeah, it was. Sync, yeah. yeah. And it was fun. And there's something about, uh, you know, with making a video, you have the quality of the video. And then if it's a music video or whatever, you have the quality of the song. So it was cool because I, I, I could use high quality, a high quality song, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. lip sync to it. So it adds something to that video, mm-hmm. you know? Um, There's no copyright back then. <laughs> no copyright back yeah, then. So it was uh, everybody was just doing yeah. all kind. Yeah. And then so I did, I was doing lip syncs and I did a, uh, I don't know which one w- happened first. I think it was a Justin Bieber one. Yeah, uh, Bieber. There, you had a Katy Perry one. I, yeah, I had, I mean, I did Kesha, Katy Perry, yeah, Kesha, Justin yeah. Bieber, but I had done a, a Justin Bieber one with my friend Matt, and uh, it was just really a lot of fun to film. And we kind of had like a feeling like, oh, this might do kind of well. And I uploaded it, and it turned out that the actual music video for that song was coming out the next day <laughs> and somehow it, it had gotten enough traction like i think two three hundred k views that justin saw it and so he tweeted like hey what's up guys you know the single for eeny meeny drops mm-hmm. or tomorrow in the video but i guess someone leaked it and he <laughs> tweeted that so then we had this influx of all these people because they were clicking on the link thinking that it, it was, was the a, actual yeah. video so that that was a big jump. That's wild. Too, yeah. I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. It was a trip. I mean, he did it and then yeah, Katy Perry. There was all these bands that were tweeting or putting my stuff on their Facebook. So that helped yeah. a lot. And I love doing it. And then the copyright happened. Mm-hmm. And then so a lot of them got taken down. Um, and that's when I started kind of doing parodies and mm-hmm. those did some of those did well. So Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite, it's not a parody, it's the original, is um, that's um, Aloha. Oh, yeah, that's Aloha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, look, I'm going to show you. I have, I think I have 10 songs like on my actual phone. Oh, no ways. One, uh, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's Aloha by Alex Oh, Martin. that's so <laughs> sick. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think I bought it. That's why. I think that's why no it's still ways. on my phone. Oh, th- that's yeah. awesome, man. That's so <laughs> that's, sick. That was such a funny video because it was so relatable. Everything you do, mm. so relatable. Thanks, it's just man. local comedy, but it's it's like very professionally done. Mm-hmm. And it's e- everybody can relate to what you're saying in the video. Even like uh, your um, lip sync ones, you, you still have like this local flair to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was It's... Growing up with that, it brings back so many great memories, and especially the little, like uh, the peeing on your foot when you step on the vada, oh, yeah, and like yeah. you know cracking coconuts on her head. Yeah, uh, 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 that's awesome. That it. means a lot. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, that 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 Go song. Go check it out, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that that was the first song I did vocals in a in a professional studio, yeah. and I went in and I uh, I was yelling everything. Cause I was just kind of stoked. Cause I recorded a lot of stuff just on my USB mic mm-hmm. on GarageBand. But that one, we I went into a studio, and I was like yelling all the lyrics. And then I got the mix, and I was like listening to it. I was like, "Whoa, it sounds like I'm like really angry." <laughs> and so I went in again, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna be like way laid back and do like a low voice." Yeah. And it worked a lot and that's better. How you got it. Yeah. What you doing today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like play ukulele. Nah. <laughs> I know all, all the lyrics. That's awesome. It's true. <laughs> yeah. So you, you had that and then you you really got into like this local like niche where you started doing the broad auditions. You started creating these characters. There's Bobo. Mm-hmm. There's a couple, a bunch of other characters. And you kind of just went like full full into that lane, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, the auditions and the mock mock star, the mock audition, yeah, yeah, was a big like a big uh, series that you did, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I I think you know, of course, growing up out here in local comedy, I grew up watching you know Augie, the Brothers, um, uh, Raps Hawaii, you know, like all that kind of stuff, and I it, I think it just it the way my head works, I always have like. Oh, it would be funny if this, it would be funny if that, you know, and there's a lot of just local comedy mixed into that. And I, that's what I love doing. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I would have ideas and I, I mean, I don't know how many videos I have on the internet. Like at least there might be a thousand mm-hmm. at least, but, um, you know, I've done st- a lot of stuff now that, that isn't local comedy, but the lo- local comedy ones are the ones where, I don't know. I just connect to them more, and they're a, they're a lot of fun to film, you know. And yeah. I get ideas all the time, all the time. Yeah, it's just yeah. like 
Yeah, and then recently you've been posting uh, on your social media again with all the collabs with all the other local creators. Yeah, yeah. It's been so you funny. Know, guys, yeah. yeah. It's like when um, you don't hear uh, like a song from your favorite band for a while, and mm -hmm. then suddenly they just release a new song. That's what it felt like when you released the new video oh, after yeah. like a year or two. Because you're off social media for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I've been working on on a movie, mm -hmm. multiple movies actually. Yeah. But um, there's one that's kind of like the the one that I, ca I can say that it's called One Million Dollar. Um, so that's like the main project I've been focusing on. But I basically in 2020, in the middle of 2020, I decided to really take the next step. I had the script written, um, uh, but I, I decided to take the next step in, uh, with two other guys, uh, my friend uh, Randall Bacon and um, Charlie, my godfather. We, f we formed a, a production company called One Dollar Studios. Mm -hmm. And with the idea, and this is something I've always wanted to, to do, is kind of do you know what Adam Sandler has done, you know, you see a lot of groups of people that work with the same crew and mm -hmm. actors and they kind of make, you know, movies after movie. Uh, and that was kind of a passion of mine. So, you know, with $1 million, that's the first film that, you know, we were going to put a lot of energy into and make, but we ended up also coming in and executive producing other films and I acted in them and we had, you know, hands in about, mm -hmm. I think eight or nine now. Yeah. We just, did, we just, uh, worked on two in Thailand, like back to back. And that was like a crazy experience just filming out there for two months. But $1 million, I, I wrote, I had the idea for it. Um, I think in 2017 and I wrote it with my friend, uh, Peter Gilroy and, uh, we had tried to get it greenlit for, for a while. Um, and then finally just, you know, it's a lot of work making mm -hmm. a feature film, but yeah. we're almost, almost done now. Th is so, this yeah. based off of the $1 skit? Um, it's like loosely based mm -hmm. off of it a little bit. I mean, if you know, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it touches on a lot of things, you know, it's, it's basically what would happen if you gave a homeless guy a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, and you see kind of everything that he goes through, you know, he blows it on his friends and he rents a big truck in a house and he gets taken advantage of and, you know, his uh, relatives come out of the w woodwork mm -hmm. because now he has money. Um, but it but it, you know, also touches on, you know, the homeless problem that we have here in Hawaii and it touches a little bit on plastic waste. Mm. So it, it I tried to fit you know a good message in there with everything but mainly uh what i want to do with this movie and ho hopefully um more original movies that that we make that we're not just executive producing uh to motivate and inspire the the youth mm. mainly of hawaii but you know if it can go beyond that then that's yeah. great uh but that's that's kind of really what I'm I'm trying to do with this. Uh, and another guy that helped me uh, was uh, uh, this director David Cunningham, and I just worked on a film with him uh, in November 2020, and it's now finally coming out, uh, The Wind and the Reckoning. Yeah, and it's I mean it it's doing amazing. really yeah. It yeah. just did the Boston Film Festival, and I think it got like best editing, best no director, way. best actress. Um, uh, that's where I met Lindsay uh, and she's in $1 million. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just great to see, you know, I've been working at this for so long and uh, for so much of the beginning of it, I've done a lot of things myself, mm -hmm. but to collaborate with the influencers out here on the other islands and to come together and make funny stuff. And now, to go beyond the social media platform and work in feature films and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's just a dream yeah. come true. You know, it, it really is a, a beautiful thing. And I kind of had this, a realization, I think right before, 
uh, right when I was kind of jumping into like, oh, should I try try and make a movie? I I saw this kid. I've told a lot of people this story, but I saw this kid um, at Safeway. Uh, I had I was really addicted to ice cream. Like I needed ice cream at the end of every night, mm-hmm. and I would get the that Halo top uh, Halo top ice mm-hmm. cream because uh, it's cause like kind of healthy, you know, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> um, and I was going in. I think it was like eleven at night or something. And I saw this kid at Safeway working. He was like mopping the floors, and he looked like I don't know, but he looked like he might have been like twelve or something. I don't know, but it, all I know is that it was late and he was working. And I didn't ask him a- any questions, but he he was blocking. He was standing in front of the ice cream door, so I was like <laughs> waiting there. And he looked up at me and he and he knew me from the videos. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, I, oh, I watch your videos. I like them. He had some nice stuff to say. Um, and I said, you know, thank you very much. And I was leaving, and I was thinking to myself, you know, maybe that kid uh, is v- a really good dancer or a singer, or he's really talented. Um, but you know he's working hard here you know at safeway at night you know and it just got me to thinking about you know i, I want to try my best to motivate and inspire the the kids out here because a lot of them don't know what they c- could do a lot of them end up never leaving the island mm-hmm. uh so i i was lucky enough in the YouTube days, I, I had an opportunity to go back to LA, which I was really skeptical about doing. Um, but I learned a lot out there and they struggled a lot too. But, um, anyways, the point that I'm trying to make was David Cunningham. He directed uh, beyond paradise. Mm. Have you heard about that movie? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it, it's a, it's an old movie. Um, but it still kind of holds its weight. You know, if anybody out there ha- hasn't seen it, I'd check it out. I think yeah. you can see it on YouTube for One free. of the classic movies from here. Yeah. So mm. um, gr- it was shot in Kona. Mm-hmm. So, and I had some like teachers even in my high school that had small parts in it. So when we would have, you know, some of those days they would just put on a movie and they'd be like, oh, put on Beyond Paradise. Oh yeah, this is my part. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was me. And... But just seeing like, oh, that's that's my town. That's mm-hmm. the that's where I skate all the time. That's my school. That's the football field at my school. Uh, it just it made me feel as a kid that I could do that, you know. So that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. Um, you know, if I if I'm able to, you know, make a difference here in Hawaii, but also go beyond that and set an example for the kids to, to, so they can know, or they can believe in themselves to do something like that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of part of the journey that I'm on in trying to produce these films and, and everything. Yeah. I love Um, that. That's so cool. And I think representation is huge. I mean, Mm -hmm. like I said, I, I watched you, Ryan Higa, make videos connect it a great connect yeah you know, can yeah, yeah yeah can seeing that seeing a local person do that it's very inspiring you know mm-hmm. it it shows you a different side of the world that you never knew like wow there's opportunities out there and then to see where they started and where they're at now mm-hmm. uh and like follow that whole journey you know it it's like how we support local athletes right yeah it's like oh man i've you everyone is just so behind them like oh that's my cousin you know yeah i went to school with him or like yeah you know and any sort of mm, tiny connection you have you're like you you just try to claim it right yeah because you're so proud of that person yeah yeah Yeah, and just both being from the same place i mean i i hit up uh ken you know when i wanted to start making videos again and i didn't really know what he was doing and we just met like I don't know, somewhere down there. Mm-hmm. I'm not that familiar, but um, I don't know if it was Eva Beach or something like that, but we just met mm-hmm. and then we filmed like a couple of skits and uh, people seemed to like them. We did more and then I met a lot, a lot of the other guys and I work a lot. Um, Easton, Clown 808, mm-hmm. uh, me and Easton became really good friends and he worked on $1 million with me and 
I just want to, I want to continue to work with everyone out here. Yeah. Um, anyone who has uh, interests in comedy or telling stories, film, any of that stuff, uh, just the creative arts, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what's kind of so special, what we have out here, you know, because people, people get it, you know, and, and they're proud to be from here and, and we have a, our own unique style of comedy and it's like that ev everywhere, you know, but you know, it's, well, these are just Hawaii, bro. Yeah, exactly. You know it's me? special. And it's so yeah. cool to see your favorite comedians, actors, singers, whatever, when they collaborate. Yeah. You know, it's like, like it's, it's like seeing the Avengers assemble, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. whoa, Tony Stark and the Hulk and Thor. Oh, and this guy and this guy. It's like, what? Yeah. It's like the coolest thing, you know, when they have those movies, like uh, you guys all have your own solo movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, you make a video together and that's the Avengers right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's so, it's so fun for us to see, especially, you know, with the, the, the transition from YouTube to Instagram. Now yeah. we have like this influencer collaborations. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it's as a, you know, this a, a big YouTuber guy. I just grew up seeing with all those videos and seeing all these people. It's honestly one of the coolest things. It's yeah. And because we don't really have a big acting Hollywood scene over here. Right. Mm -hmm. So our Hollywood is, was YouTube. Yeah. Is Instagram. Yeah. Right. So you guys are like the, Hollywood celebrities, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it's really cool. And to hear what you're doing now where you're trying to, you know, become like the Adam Sandler of Hawaii, mm -hmm. I can see that becoming so huge. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's interesting because that, that period where I was doing YouTube a lot, I it was, I was really lucky because I was able to sort of at least pay my bills for a little bit mm -hmm. doing those videos. And I could do whatever video I wanted, you know, because it was kind of based on views. You would have brand deals here and there. But now it's a lot harder, especially as a comedian. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why I want to try and involve um, everyone out here in, in you know, maybe a, sh maybe a series, maybe a show uh, or just movies in general because we don't it, – it's, it's hard now to find a platform that will support – that you know what i mean you know back back in the day you had oc16 and i pitched a show to oc16 uh and they were like oh yeah this is great you just gotta get your own sponsors and that's the way it was explained to me i had to go and find you know three or four sponsors they would pay a certain amount and they would we would show their commercials in between you know on commercial mm -hmm. breaks i don't know i think it was kind of similar to that's how like Augie and DeBrada's they kind of did their shows but I mean a lot of people don't watch TV anymore and Instagram is free <laughs> so, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> uh, so it's it's it, for for a long time before I finally made that jump into making features mm -hmm. I was like what is that platform mm -hmm. what is that platform that will allow us to come together and makes you know little things that make people laugh mm -hmm. but we but that can be our full-time job mm -hmm. you know uh and i think you know it with with features that's a way of doing it with maybe at some point getting some sort of show or series off the ground that's a way to do it uh but i i thought of you know other than social media it's it there really isn't a whole lot, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, what, a, yeah. what about like a local SNL? You're, yeah. You're I'm someone a, I've always been like, oh, I wish I, I would see Alex on SNL. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I thought about that. That's come up, mm -hmm. you know, over the past like 10, 12 years. You know, what What about a Hawaii SNL? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, again, it's just about getting, it has to be sustainable, mm -hmm. you know? I, I thought about, I had an idea I think I kind of softly pitched it to Hawaiian Airlines because they have a player, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, they have free stuff on there and some of their free stuff is local produced things. Um, and that could be something. But still, I don't know if that's sustainable to to take, you know, between five or 12 of us 
and have us do that as a career for a mm-hmm. year. Yeah. You know? Um, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I, over the years, every, since I started doing features, it's like, I feel like I'm in boot camp. It's, I'm, I have to learn mm-hmm. things that I don't necessarily, I didn't know about. And I'm like, I just want to create. Mm-hmm. I just want to, you know, I, I can, I know where to put the camera and tell the story and edit and stuff like that. But you have to do paperwork and you have to do spreadsheets mm-hmm. and, and, um, permits. And all yeah. That stuff, permits. Yeah. Like the producing side of it is, is crazy as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm hoping that all this hustling will eventually uh, pay off mm-hmm. and it will benefit everyone. Yeah. You know? I believe it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I believe it. It's going to happen soon. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be first one in line at the movie theaters to watch that. Yeah. Are you trying, are you trying to make like Hollywood film, independent, Netflix? So trying? What, is, what is the goal here? That was, that was the other thing that I... I so I worked with my friend Peter because um, he had written scripts before in LA uh, and yeah, I had never written like a, a script before. Mm-hmm. So we, we had a lot of different ideas and when I first, you know, my first ideas were like, oh, we should do something that's like a big budget and it's like in Hawaii. I, one, of, one of them was like three estranged brothers but their dad owns a hotel chain and mm-hmm. There's just like crazy story arc and there's explosions and all this stuff. And I had to kind of back away from that um, because in my head I was like, oh, uh, you know, this is gonna, this will look so cool and I'm going to look cool, you know, like all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just like, I want to, I want to start with something that could be like a Beyond Paradise. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, so if it could be like a, a cult comedy classic just here, then that's I'm I would be happy with just that for this for this film. I think it has the ability to go beyond that, but that's kind beyond of paradise. Oh yeah, beyond paradise. Yeah. But uh you know, for for this for this first project, it's really about just home mm-hmm. and and I, I want people here to see it. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, it'll, if anything, brighten people's day up, you know, like make them laugh and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but down the line, just like uh, social media and YouTube, you have to play a little bit of a game. And so I'm, I'm finding that out, you know, with, with that's how it is in, this industry as well you know you need to have uh certain actors or 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 an actor you need to have a producer attached or a director Mm -hmm. attached uh in order for that film to get distribution but i'm i'm trying my best and in you know having the stories take place here having it benefit the people here Mm -hmm. uh and then my hope is that one day, you know, down the line, if these first, the first slate of films do well, then we won't have to follow those like rules or guidelines as much. Create your own rules. Yeah. yeah. Blaze your own trail. Yeah. It's like if, I mean, Adam Sandler's first movie, I mean, he, he did SNL and it, it was produced, I think, by like Lauren Michaels mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, but if Adam Sandler had just made his first movie with like, some friends and he hadn't done SNL before Mm -hmm. it wouldn't have gotten like a lot of distribution Mm -hmm. and it probably wouldn't have made its money back and they wouldn't have been able to make another one and another one. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of figuring out how it all works. So it's sustainable. Yeah. And a lot of that is about, uh, patience, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's the long game. Yeah. Long game. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you think that people don't take you as seriously because of YouTube? You know, they, they, they think like, oh, he's just a YouTuber, but they don't really see like, oh, yeah. this guy can actually act. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, I, I always just wanted to be an actor. And I, over the past 12, 13 years, well, no, like 12 years, I, I kind of live half in Kona on the Big Island and half in Culver City in LA. 
And um, I always saw YouTube as a stepping stone to help get me into into acting. And in the first maybe, I don't know, six, seven years, you know, I got hit up to be in, a, in like two or three movies. They weren't like the biggest parts. One of the movies never even finished, never was finished being made. Do you still get paid for stuff like that though? Yeah, but not a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and... So it really wasn't happening, and I. But I also had sat down with agents, you know, and and had, you know, a nice sushi, uh, sushi lunch, and they paid for, it and they're like, yeah, you know, we're gonna do this and like this next thing. I remember a lot of people. There was for like a month. I got sat down, and they're like, oh, there's this thing called Hunger Games. It's gonna be the next like Harry Potter, and we want to get you in it. And we think. You know, so start reading the books, and we're gonna try and get you in as one of the main characters in Hunger Games. And like Hunger Games, of course, it was mm. became pretty big, but it was a lot of talk. Like these lunches, it was a lot of talk. And I know that there was a stigma behind being a YouTuber. I had um, other friends or you know colleagues that I worked at the same um, YouTube network that were way bigger than me, millions of followers. But they didn't get roles as actors because, um, you know, at that time and still a little bit now, people look at, oh, that's just like a kid with a camera in his room. He can't act. He didn't go to like Juilliard or anything like that. Uh, so th that is something that is, I, I, I would probably guess it's still kind of going on a little bit today where it's like, well, this, this person has millions of followers, so we have to put them in this and it's going to help it but it doesn't always work you know like if you took a gamer with 50 million subscribers and put them in like a rom-com you know how many people are going to really transfer over it and then watch that movie mm -hmm. it's so it's again it's a it's all about like a from what i'm learning it's all about like formulas you know mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it's kind of tough and that's why I I started I would audition here and there and I, and in uh I think yeah 2017 I started auditioning for commercials and I booked like 3 of them pretty fast and it was great but you know I was still going on a lot of auditions and I kept telling myself you know I could be making something myself um and not waste my time driving, parking, waiting in a room. But that's the thing, you know, like I was talking to you about this earlier. It's like I've always kind of gone back and forth, um, especially, you know, in my 20s being like, oh, I just want to work for someone else. I just want someone else to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And then doing that. And then then when I'm in there, I'm like, oh, I just want to make my own stuff. I just want to make it. I, a lot of people don't know, I, I hosted an animal show for Discovery Channel for a year. I lived in San Francisco, and I hosted an animal. And I had a lot of great experiences with that. Uh, you know, I was in front of the camera, but I was also writing and, and all that stuff. But I was still, like, working for Discovery. And so it, it was, that year was challenging because even though I was in front of the camera – and I was like hosting and kind of acting. We would do like, I would dress up like a cat and we would do like a silly video. Um, in the back of my head, I was still like, well, is this, is this helping me? You know, how much, how much longer should I do this for? Uh, because it is, it can be comfortable because it's a nine, it was a nine to five mm -hmm. and you're getting a paycheck. And then when you're doing this, it's, it's, you know, financially, it's it's all over the place. I mean, I come out. I used to come out to Oahu when I started doing the Instagram videos a lot, uh, just to do collabs. You know, I'd be sleeping in cars, you know, overnight, or you know, crashing on a couch. Mostly sleeping in cars, though. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, get up, I'd shower at the gym, and then I would make a, a funny video, and. Uh, the first, I I tried to make an album, I think maybe 
is it was a while ago, maybe like seven, eight years ago mm-hmm. in Maui with my friend Ola and I was sleeping in the, uh, the recording studio and I was showering outside w- with a hose, but it's all for, you know, the love of creating, you know, whatever, as long as I'm making st- something at the end of the day, like I can look back and I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, that was a productive day. Mm-hmm. And I was able to, you know, have something to show for it. I got a lot more out of that mm-hmm. than um, working for someone. Yeah, and see, it seems like you already have a, a this discipline already, you know, inside of you. Maybe mm-hmm. it's from sports, the tennis early on in the days. Tennis, you're not uh, afraid yeah. to work hard. You kind of know, like, this is the process. You know, yeah, you're not, you're not. Doesn't sound like you're, you're too discouraged. Like, oh, it's not happening like that yeah, right yeah there's a process there's a you know a wait a grace period that you have to go through right yeah yeah it's it yeah. i mean it's especially i think this year as i've gotten older it's i have to find that balance mm-hmm. because i'm definitely a huge workaholic you know mm-hmm. i work all the time it, it's hard for me to just slow down and just like sit on the sand and just chill yeah. if i go to the beach i jump in the water i'm like okay i'm in the water I went to the beach okay not going to go back to work. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there was a, there was this one month when YouTube was going really well that year. <clears throat> and then I was like, okay, for all every day in December, since the, it's the holidays, I'm going to put out a video every day in December mm-hmm. and not just like a whatever video. And I made a schedule and I was like, Wednesdays are going to be like a parody music video. Fridays are going to be an Ace Ventura video. Mm. Um, and I set out to do that. And that month, like, I was burnt out. Oh, I can only imagine. I, I thought I could, like, shoot <laughs> two or three crazy. videos a day. But every day was, like, waking up, oh, what is the idea? And then staying up until, like, 3 a.m. editing, editing it. Editing is the worst. Yeah. So, yeah, editing is gnarly. <laughs> um so it, that's the other thing you get, you get burnt out a lot, you know? And so I've been trying to work on finding that balance mm-hmm. between work and just taking time, mm-hmm. you know, exercise, just going out and, and not feeling okay with not having to be productive every mm-hmm. second. You know what I mean? That's, that's such a classic struggle for a lot of entrepreneurs, people mm-hmm. that make their own schedule. Yeah. It's like when you stop working. Yeah. Because there's always work to be done. Right. Yeah, you're always going to be busy. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a classic one. Well, speaking about taking a break, um, we got some snacks here from 7-Eleven, our sponsor Ooh. for this episode, 7-Eleven Hawaii. So uh, I can feel my stomach uh, grumbling. So Yeah, let's jump I into feel it. Like, yeah, let's try some stuff. We, we got okay. some really cool things right over here. Um, <clears throat> here, let's... So if you're not watching this on the visual feed, go head over to YouTube and Spotify to see us try some of these Ono snacks. I know we have two things from Korea. So the snacks are the Korean 7 snacks, 7-Eleven snacks. It's only made in Korea. And then um, they bring it out here? But it's only um, se- it's only available at 7-Eleven Hawaii. Okay, out okay. Out of all the 7-Elevens in the world. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is okay. only exclusively Exclusive, here. exclusive right exclusive, now, folks. Exclusive, yeah. And then, of course, we got the Char Siu Manapua, the classic ones. We all know how that tastes, the, the Spam Musubis. Um, and it's all made fresh uh, daily by their partner, Wa- Warabeya USA in Waipahu. And all 65 store locations receive two deliveries daily. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I didn't know that, you know, it was like, I love how they, you know, they focus on local, you know, they hire local people and it's all yeah. made locally. Yeah. Which makes sense because, like, I don't want sushi shipped from <laughs> wherever, you know. Right, right, right. Eating it the next day. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, so these sushi rolls, we got the uh, spicy ahi nori roll. Uh, you got the tuna with cucumber roll. Oh, and then the cool. original spam musubi. Everybody knows the classic 7-Eleven spam musubi. Yep, yep. It says that they, so they sell approximately 10,000 units per day across their stores. What? That's yeah. crazy. And then uh, the that island pure water right here. 
uh-huh. they only sell it in 7-Eleven. That's the only place you can get it. No way. 7-Eleven Hawaii. Learning so much about 7-Eleven. Yeah, you know, I grew up with 7-Eleven in, in Kona, but we don't yeah. ha- we have it in Hilo side, but we don't mm-hmm. have it in Kona anymore. So oh, whenever really? I yeah, whenever oh. I go Hilo or if I come to the other islands, I always go 7-Eleven. Yeah, it's, and I grabbed this. <laughs> it's, yeah, they have 65 store locations, Oahu, Kauai, Maui, and Hilo. And, um, you know, it's all operated under the um, Japan store. Okay, okay. Yeah, so super cool because 7-Eleven is like that classic local spot you go to, oh, right? Yeah. Like, we, we, so. did a, we did a skit um, where we do the jingle, the old 7-Eleven jingle. Oh, what is that? I don't even remember. It, it's not, it's not oh, out okay. yet, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm... Let's let's go with the sushi first because okay. you're talking about the sushi uh, dinners or lunches, whatever. Okay, okay. Okay, so these ones you have to roll with your uh, roll. Oh yeah, you have to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so let's see like, how how good are you at rolling it? Oh, I, I remember I used to do this all the time. I haven't done it <laughs> so long though. I don't remember. I've probably eaten a few of these in my life. So let's try this. Okay, Can you do okay. it with one hand though? That's the that's the challenge. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Hey, right, you got that camera right there. Let's. Let's see Alex's rolling skills. Wait, did you just start? Wait, I think I messed up already. <laughs> wait, oh no, no, wait. Okay, I did, I did, oh. the, the instructions are in Japanese. I don't know how to how to read. Wait, this. I think you pull. Oh, you pull this I'm out. Put this down here. That side, and then roll them. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Small kind one hand. Yeah. A bit. It's funny because. Uh, oh, you already. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 7-Eleven, crispy, crispy. hire this guy right here. Yeah, let me work at a down, <laughs> bro, a down. Should I, I take a bite? Yeah, yeah, try it, try it out. I didn't even do it. I'm just amazed by that technique. <laughs> the the one hand, one mouth bite or technique. Okay, how do I do this? Oh, I, I know I messed up already. Oh, wait, right there. Oh, she's cool. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What is that, the, the spicy, spicy ahi? Yep. Okay, this is the tuna. They're kind of making a mess. Mmm. Mmm. This yeah. is good. Yeah, super good. For bomb. convenient store food. Mm-hmm. It's funny because people think about 7 Eleven in the States mm-hmm. and they, they, they're turned off by it. Mm-hmm. I've had other people to come here visit say, like, you guys go to 7 Eleven? Oh, no, like, we get That's bomb like a stuff. ghetto place. But here in Hawaii, yep. that's the go to spot. Yep. They got some good quality stuff. Yeah. Hold on. This is mean. I have to I have to start getting this more. Welcome back to <laughs> Nori ASMR. <laughs> and of course we got our big gulps. Everybody knows about the big gulps, the ICs over there. I really want to try this um Korean snacks. This is Yeah, you hear the that's the classic sound of the bag opening. Mm-hmm. I can't even open it. Big cheese bob. Yeah, you can you can try to open okay. this one and hold it up to the camera. See how that looks. Oh, this is like popcorn. Oh, butter baguette. It looks like garlic toast. Mmm. But I don't know. Let's um, see. Yeah. Sample them. Oh, this one is mean. Big cheese bob. Only available at 7-Eleven Hawaii. Oh, you gotta try this one after. Okay. Oh, is it right. like a little piece of toast? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Bro, that's like straight up garlic toast. <laughs> try so it bomb. This, one. this one's super good. If you put, if you got like a plate of spaghetti and you yeah. dip this in there, yeah. Mmm. Oh, it's sweet too. Mm hmm. Oh, I love it. Oh. Oh, you can you can really taste the garlic butter. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, this oh. one is bomb too. Isn't that one mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like cheese popcorn except sweet. Yeah, and it says in Korean, uh, "Super healthy for you. This will make your mouth broken." Right over here, it says it. No ways. I yeah. I just learned how to read Korean. That's Terry. <laughs> <laughs> broke them out. Yeah, broke them out. Mm. Oh. oh yeah. I had no idea this was at 7-Eleven. Okay, we'll definitely eat some more after. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, because if we keep going, I don't. Th- I think I'm gonna connect attack after yeah. this. Ooh, I'm Good really job. impressed by the sushi. Yeah, it's fresh. Yeah, you wouldn't really expect good sushi from Seven Eleven. Yeah. Mm. Now you but know now if you know. like, <laughs> if you ever want to like, you have a nice date or something like, yeah, gotta. Yeah, it's from Nobu actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just this is take take, take the wrapper yeah. out. Yeah, plate it on a nice plate. Oh wow. <laughs> It is $150, that one. $150, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You gotta arrange all this. Again, I don't know here. That's okay. Oh, and we and they, they gave us some notebooks to take home. And oh, cherry. Yeah. I'm gonna fill this big gulp with something one day. Yep. Yeah, shout out to 7 Eleven Hawaii for supporting local, for supporting our podcast, and supporting our stomachs on today's episode. How did it go? Is it? Oh, yes, yeah, 7 Eleven Hawaii. <laughs> We're coming true for you? Is that the one? Is that or no, is that Ala Moana? I'm trying to think there's one that's we're lifetime friends. But I think that's a totally different <laughs> commercial. Well, Ala Moana is ooh, ah, oh wow, Ala Moana. You ever heard that? I don't remember. I think 7 Eleven is like, yeah, 7 Eleven Hawaii, we're coming true for you. <laughs> if not, that's what it is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah, patent pending on that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna be hit um if you guys use this, we're going to have to copyright it. We're going to reverse copyright all the people that tried to copyright us on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> all right, on. Yeah, I'm going to put this on the side. Ooh. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, got a little ASMR for the rappers. Did I get any nori in my teeth? Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I? Nope, you're good. Am I good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you good. Okay. All right, and I'll head over to our OnlyFans uh, after this to see us eat the rest of uh, yep. all this food. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mukbang. Yeah. All right, so awesome room mm, soup that got me really excited. Oh, I still got I still got all the flavors in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> all right, so let's get into Instagram questions right now. Okay. All right, uh, Escadiz wants to know, or Scadiz maybe. Scadiz. Uh, what's your inspiration for characters? Slash, um, drawn from people slash experience or, let me, okay. What's your inspiration for characters? Drawn from people slash experiences you've had? Two questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it is drawn from people. Like I said, my tennis coach, uh, a lot from him. Uh, just like people I've met, you know, um, I think one is from like my librarian teacher in elementary school. Uh, I think that's that's the original oh, ones. Is that the one with the suspenders? Like the, the no, no, one? but... It's weird. No, like, that's Bobo. Right? Hmm? Is that Bobo? Yeah, Bobo, Bobo. Yeah, yeah. Bobo is... Bobo's kind of a mix of just growing up and hearing the the radio spots, the politician radio spots. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's not... I don't know if it's particularly from one certain person. And if you notice, like, the first Bobo video I did, his voice has evolved and changed mm, so I much. Yeah, it was more, I don't know, It was. I was doing some weird kind of thing, like throat thing or something, I don't know. But uh, there's that, and I remember one of my favorite characters back in the day, I would do um, Enrique Iglesias, mm. but I was really doing an impersonation of this girl that I met out here in Oahu a long time ago, and she was a foreign exchange student. From Spain? I don't know from Spain. what she could have been from Spain, but but she would always uh, like I, I I didn't really know her. Like me and my my friend Matt were out in Waikiki, and we ran into her, and she's like, "Oh, this place is so beautiful. I never want to leave ever, never ever. It's the most beautiful place in the world ever. Never want to leave ever." And then for some reason. I just started doing that as Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> it was very random. Yeah. And then I kind of, for um, uh, a movie I did in 2019 with um, Stefan Schaefer, who also directed One Million Dollar, mm-hmm. um, I did this this yoga character um, named Shiv, and I kind of did that same sort of thing. But it's more like this, more mm-hmm. prouder. And then, you know, your chakras are aligned and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so it's kind of a mix, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, what about Kamaina? Is that from your, your tennis coach? I think a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's like if he what, if he was more of a kid or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. How do I get out of here, bro? Yeah. Holy oh, shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, what is um, the line where you're wrestling the chair? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chalk, chalk, come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go to sleep. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, classic. All right, all right. So K underscore Zilla wants to know why you get one dollar. Why get one dollar? Cause I was just walking around, you know, it's there on top of the ground over there. I just pick them up over there and need one dollar cause, uh, you know, that's good. You pay for stuff like gasoline, whatever. Go 7 Eleven with one dollar. Maybe get a stick of gum or something like that. Yeah, shoot, 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 mm-hmm. shoot, shoot. <laughs> shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> love it, love it. Okay, great question. <laughs> uh, High Ticket Films wants to know Corner Town Culture. Corner that, Town that's Culture. That's the question. Corner Town Culture. Um, you know, I feel like they're, I don't know, it's laid back, it's chill, you know, I don't know. It's it's changed a lot, you know, just like all the uh, other islands, I think. Mm. Um, Iron Man is happening right now, mm. so it's like super busy. That's one of the biggest things. It's yeah. like the Merry Monarch of Hilo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of Kona. yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, back in the day, you know, there, I remember growing up, there was only like two traffic lights on the whole island, and now... And I would I would remember like hearing like auntie say like oh I used to come down took five minutes to come down to town off the mountain get my mm-hmm. mail and drive back up the mountain it's not like that anymore mm-hmm. you know there's there's some gnarly like, traffic but but the culture I don't know it's um it's a mix because it's a lot more touristy than here it, yeah it's a way more touristy mm-hmm. and that that's that's kind of what I was gonna say it's it's like half choke tourists mm-hmm. and then half a lot of locals working for all the tourist businesses Mm -hmm. you know um so it's like when it's busy i'm sure it benefits every everybody uh but i think it's it rides that you can get you know i guess aggravated a little bit because there's so many tourists all the time when it's busy you know so but i think for the most part what i like about growing up in Kona and the big Island in general is it's open spaces. You know, that was a, that was a big thing when I, when I left and I went to, um, LA for film school, I lived in Hollywood mm. and I had a little bit of a culture shock because I never knew where I was. Cause there was buildings everywhere. Mm. And in Kona, especially Kona side, but Hilo side, small kind too, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know where the water is. It's always there, you know, and there's something that it's not claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. And I and I also remember in high school, my English teacher told me, I think it was Mark Twain uh, visited the Big Island and he wrote, uh, there's room out here to think. I don't know if that's the exact quote, but it was something like mm-hmm. that. And I always connected with that. Oh, I know what quote you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. It's a really good quote. It's like room or space out here to yeah. think or something. Something about being disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like, I think I could be wrong, but I think he wrote it like when he was sitting on like a crater out by like the volcano or something like that. It could be totally wrong. But, um, but yeah, it was something about that. And mm-hmm. I remember when I moved to, uh, to Hollywood, I felt creatively claustrophobic mm. you know but overall the Kona culture is uh cherry and is chill and is uh yeah i mean you see we cruising brother yeah. we cruising it's sunnier than hilo that's for sure yes <laughs> <laughs> right on yeah that's where we go to and we have to escape the rain yeah Let's go to Kona. yeah Nice but when it's not raining in Hilo, it's oh, super beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. I just love the Big Island culture. I mean, yeah. Big Island too. You, you have a yard. Yeah, you're not this close to another neighbor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always joke with my friends when they come to visit Hilo. I'm just like, this is what you call a yard. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. It's. I think that also helped a lot. Just being a a weird kid growing up, wanting to make stuff. Mm. You had a lot of open space. A lot of open space. I yeah. could like yell and just mm. do whatever, and nobody yeah. would. Where I, where I shot the one dollar video, it's a huge um, neighborhood now, mm-hmm. but it was just empty lots back in the yeah. day, and I was just like a weird 
kid with a tripod yelling at myself <laughs> like if, when people drive by you're like okay yeah and i'm moving here when they put up the and housing. it was actually a lot weirder back then because influencers weren't a thing mm -hmm. making a video because now you see people with their vlog cameras their selfie yeah. sticks just doing like tiktok dances yeah but imagine just seeing somebody just talking to themselves yeah i loved <laughs> it i loved it because everyone you got like two different types of people like the people that were like oh weird and and then you had people that were like looking and they're like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, and curious, I would, right? I would always ask them, you want to be in it? Mm -hmm. And I, that's, I got a lot of different people, especially mm -hmm. in the earlier um, days when I was filming YouTube videos. Cause I was just like, oh yeah, you want to be in it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do this. Oh yeah. Just dance over there. I'll jump mm -hmm. off the rock wall and I'm like, hey, hey. Yeah. And, and they're like, stoked, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, they're probably TikTok dancing. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a TikTok? Mm-hmm. But it was musically. I had it when it was musically. Oh, okay. And uh, my friend, I, I did a lot of my other uh, friend who did a lot of YouTube videos back in the day, Bart. Um, he knew the the guys that made musically, mm -hmm. so he told me about it right when it came out. And he's like, "Oh, put some stuff mm -hmm. out here." So we, you know, we're putting stuff out, and they would feature it. So it did really well, and then I stopped, and then. Then it eventually became TikTok, and I've like put up like a few things, mm -hmm. but not really. Hard to keep up, yeah. yeah it's yeah, it's like I said, it's another, it's another game. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like if you wanna do it full time and like go at it, you can, you can most likely get somewhere, mm -hmm. but you have to be like commit hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Nihan San wants to know what inspires you. What inspires me? Um. You know, I think kind of getting back to what I was talking uh, about before, I think what inspires me is seeing when I inspire other people, mm. you know, um, that, yeah, I haven't posted that much, uh, lately, but when I do, you know, you see sometimes I'll get a DM and it's like somebody's kid and he's like, Oh, my kid quotes this all the time or whatever. And, they're like laughing and stuff like that. It's it, it really reminds me, you know, that even though these are like silly videos, sometimes it does like make a difference, you know, it can, I mean, it, it, there's content out there that has helped me like a lot of podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm in my head or something's going bad or it's just junk times in general i can put on a podcast and i can get a couple laughs out of it and it takes me out of the space mm -hmm. i think that's a big thing about making you know little comedy videos uh to sort of give people a break from reality when reality is sort of not the best at the moment so i i think that that's one of the biggest things that inspire me for sure right on yeah. i love that yeah and you've Trust me, you've given uh, me and my friends a lot of laughs, that's for sure. Jay, Jay. Still to this day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Miss Natalie P. P.E. Eh, not P.E.E. -E. Uh -huh. Not like she-she kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Miss Natalie P. wants to know, who has been your favorite character to play across all your channels and videos? I, You know, it changes a lot. Um, it changes, but I think... I mean, this character guy, that's the main character in the $1 million. Um, I might be doing a few more stuff with him, like to promote the movie when it finally comes out. But he's kind of, he's fun, you know. That's, oh, by the way, this is why I have a huge beard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm usually pretty like, like either clean shaven or just have a little bit of scruff. Mm -hmm. But I'm growing out this beard because um, the character guy has a huge beard in the movie. Uh, so, uh, but he, he's like, I mean, from, ha I've had to, e I'm, I had to edit the whole movie, which was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Um, and just working with that character for so long, he is humble, but he's also kind of goofy, you know, uh, it's just like a heartwarming character. Mm -hmm. So I've been really, it, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, but it really changes. I mean, like Bobo doing the Ronnie Bobo character is is great. I'm probably going to hopefully do more stuff with him. Um, I mean, there was a time where I just loved doing the Enrique Iglesias mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, Jack Sparrow is always mm, that's a, fun one. a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, 
But I think it's the ones, it's the characters that I can kind of take and run with. I don't, I can jump into that character and I don't really have to think mm -hmm. because it's just kind of, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that character says whatever it wants to say. Hopefully it's, it's funny, but I don't even think about it a lot of the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. It almost doesn't feel like acting. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. being. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you think that guy character you really enjoy because it's very similar to yourself because you seem like a very humble but goofy guy yeah a little bit yeah <laughs> so it persona personifies yourself yeah it, mm. it and it kind of um i mean you know because this care i i put a lot of work into um guy as a character uh because it touched on the homeless situation mm -hmm. out here i went out to the encampment down there uh before we even started jumping into production like a year before and i i talked to a lot of the homeless people out there and to see you know there's a lot there's a lot of like stigma that you know a lot of people that are homeless might have a drug problem or but it could be like a, a mental problem or i grew up in kona there was some homeless people that were my friends uh and they they had money but they just chose to live that way because i think it was just hum humbling for them you know they just that's what they chose they they loved the simplicity of it mm -hmm. and for me i tend to overthink all the time so i really get that to like simplify everything you know there's been a lot of times where i felt like oh uh, i'm going to like you know have a big garage sale and just wear the same shirt every day or whatever you know what i mean um, like the be minimalist a cartoon character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I think I I think so. It's it's kind of a mix of of just just being. There's a phrase uh, that I like called being right sized. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, when I think about that, it's just like you're. We're all equal. We all just are living life and and doing whatever. And um, you know, might as well be happy doing it and humble doing it. And yeah, just chill. And this is one of the best places to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right on. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. Last question. Uh, what projects are you working on now? So yeah, $1 million is one of the biggest ones. Uh, we're hoping that that will finish, you know, it'll be out next year for sure. Um, and then I'm trying to jump into doing another feature this year. So we might, I actually have a meeting after this to talk about it. And, um, I want to try and aim to shoot it December of this year and taking all that, everything I've learned, I want the turnaround to be a lot quicker because it it's taken $1 million about two years mm -hmm. from when we shot it. Um, and sometimes that happens. But I would say that's the biggest thing. And I also, um, I think we started in the beginning of 2019. I, I've been working with my friend Imuo Garza, um, who is super talented. And we uh, collaborated on an album. And I think we have about 12 songs. I'm going to start releasing the music videos and those songs pretty soon it's all originals parody all all originals like a, like actual singing or kind of like a comedy i mean i try my best to sing yeah. <laughs> but you know there might be some kind of auto tune <laughs> no but um yeah we we've been kind of sitting on an album for like a year and a half and uh, a reason for that is because there's some of those original songs are in the movie mm -hmm. so i'm trying to uh release some of the songs with music videos before one million dollar comes out. okay cool so it's yeah. not like a lonely island kind of album it's a little bit oh okay yeah you have like kind of some like island style feel good music um and then there's a couple raps in there there's a bobo rap that's <laughs> kind of fun uh and then there's like a couple like you know i wouldn't say s serious but like not super mm -hmm. comedy songs like maybe one or two in there but it's a little mix of everything. Yeah. Um, and that was going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, Imu is so talented with music produ mm -hmm. production and I've learned so much in video production and, you know, we got together and we're trying to mold both, both of them 
to put out, you know, hopefully some stuff people will enjoy. Yeah. Oh, so, I'm yeah. excited to see that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, mahalo everybody for the Instagram questions. Make sure you leave yeah. some for our next guest and maybe your question will make it on the podcast. Okay, cool. So uh, we're at the back half of the, the podcast and uh, I like to, to talk about a little bit about the local culture and like mm-hmm. growing up in Hawaii because there's just so many, and it's a melting pot, right? There's yeah. just so many different cultures, you know, there's Hawaiians growing up and, you know, not with the culture. There's local people who aren't Hawaiian growing up with Hawaiian culture, local culture, all these things. Yeah. So for you, for you growing up, because you're not Hawaiian, right? Mm-hmm. But you're like as local as it gets, uh-huh. <laughs> you know? So like, what was that experience like? Um, and like, did you, oh, did you feel like you, you, f- you fit in at times or you didn't fit in? This episode is brought to you by Silly.com. Based in Maui, Hawaii, Silly.com believes psychedelic medicine is the future of mental health. For the millions of people worldwide struggling with mental illness, access to therapeutic plant medicine is a ray of hope. Silly.com is here to share these therapies with the world. Because in the current medical health landscape, certain therapies are not working and the problem is only getting worse. They believe that the plant got it right. That is why Silly.com is focused on natural psychedelic therapies that create better, safer treatments and will help speed up the FDA approval and legalization process so people can get more effective help faster. They call this the new standard of pharma. Mahalo to Silly.com for supporting the podcast and check them out on their website. That's P-S-L-Y dot com. Yeah, you know, going back to tennis, um, I was kind of like the chubby Howley boy. Mm. So it it was, but it never bothered me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was never offended by it or anything like that. I Seems just, like you were always able to laugh at yourself. Yeah, I was always comedy, laughing at myself. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, I had like a weird speech impediment and I was pretty chubby and I was like the the Howley kid and um you know but but it didn't it didn't I don't remember it really affecting me at all mm. and uh I always wanted to like the older kids um you know I've I've it's been so long cuz I was like I don't know 8 years old or something but like the older kids would always for lunchtime go to the beach and and like with a hibachi or whatever and barbecue where the younger kids um, and like the lower level of tennis skill would like stay around the, the courts and eat, you know, whatever their parents packed them. Right. Mm-hmm. And I would always want to go with the older kids who were, you know, the next level of tennis. I think it was called Davis cup was, was the higher level. And, um, and you know, my coach was there too. And, so they, but all they would say is like, oh, well, you got to bring something. So I'd bring, you know, either like red hot dogs or Portuguese sausage. Or kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would bring like meat or rice or whatever to contribute um, every day. And my mom would still sometimes pack me a, uh, it's the sandwich with the marshmallow and peanut butter. You ever had that oh, before? Marshmallow no. fluff and peanut butter? No, I haven't. Yeah, those are really good. That's why I was kind of small kind chubby because of that too. But um, I would like give those away and then I would like go and, you know, barbecue with the brothers, you know. Um, So I felt like that kind of, I mean, they could say whatever, anyone could make fun of me, whatever, you know, but I I don't really think it it phased me that much. You had that aloha armor from the start. I guess so, you know, like I, um, (laughs) Yeah, and and it could also be from, you, you know, going to, like, a elementary school with, like, a whole mixing pot of, mm-hmm. of a bunch of people. My mom used to, likes to tell this story that one day I came home and I was crying. And I was like, Mom, why don't I have, like, a regular last name? Why is it not, like, Sakamoto or Honda or anything? like that why is it foreign and what is that well i want a regular last name because that's you know that wasn't a regular last name in my my elementary school Mm -hmm. you know um so i definitely i mean back in the day especially like kindergarten first grade there i can't remember exactly but you know i there wasn't a whole lot of like howley kids Mm -hmm. um 
But that's a that's a big thing that like people talk about a lot, and I've talked about with other influencer friends. It's like, okay, you know, what's the difference between being like Howley or local or not of Hawaiian blood or you know all those different things? Um, to me, it's kind of like again to put it simply, it's like if you know, you know. Like if you grew up here, um you know what it's like growing up here uh when all the stuff with mount akea was happening i was i was there with my friends and i cared about all that stuff and i didn't i didn't feel like people looked at me and i was like oh this is like a white kid that wasn't born and raised mm -hmm. you know he was he was just you know raised here or whatever you know i i think being from here growing up here seeing how everything has changed i mean i used to make videos in um high school and middle school about how there was too much construction in kona and on the big island you know i didn't know that it was just how i f felt and what was happening because we're like oh another building's going up another this is going up, this is going up. And it's like changing the landscape. It's changing the lifestyle and all that. Um, but, you know, it was, it was, there wasn't social media back then. Uh, so it, it's just weird how it's, it's different nowadays, you know, like it's, it's, people are very sensitive to a lot of different things, you know? I mean, I think everyone is everyone. I just want everyone to get along. You know, I, I, with what I do, making funny videos and comedy, I just want people to laugh. And, and when we have hard times, we work together, get through it. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. It really, it really didn't. I can't think of a time where it really affected me, mm. you know, even though someone was like, Oh, Holly boy or whatever. I'm still, I'm still all, like with the boys, you know, yeah. like, I think cause you know, your own truth, you know, you know, you're yeah. as local as you can get without having the blood, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, I think sometimes people just use that as like a, a Trump card, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Oh, you're local, but you're not Hawaiian, you know? Yeah. But what, what does that even mean? Because if you're, if you're Hawaiian, but you don't act Hawaiian, you don't like do anything Hawaiian. Uh huh. And how Hawaiian are you even, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, so many locals who you know they, you, you would you would think they're from California. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's just uh, it's so cool to see the dynamic. I guess not cool. But interesting to see the dynamic how different people are raised and mm -hmm. what they kind of like lean to as like are they more local like my brother would always tease me that i'm so how like growing up because i went to uh -huh. an emergency school and but i you know never was into the, doing the olies the hulas yeah all yeah. i wanted to do was play video games um play sports yeah um go go away to college so i could play sports over there yeah so he'd always tease me like oh mm -hmm. you're so how like kamaka yeah you're the, mo you're the most how like hawaiian yeah yeah, <laughs> Stuff yeah like that you know <laughs> yeah, yeah and it's i think that's a cool thing about our culture though is that we can kind of tease these these cultural um stereotypes yeah ones. because i don't think we take ourselves as seriously as maybe other people do uh -huh. especially especially if you're local and you you know the stereotypes yeah you don't take them seriously um i i hope we never lose that part of our culture yeah because people are sensitive these days mm -hmm. but we were born and raised off of Portuguese, Asian, Filipino, yeah. Japanese jokes, right. you know? Yeah. I just hope we never lose that part and people don't get overly sensitive. Yeah, me that. too. Me too. Yeah. Do you think you, you have to be cautious sometimes when you're posting something or you never really think about that? Um, No, you know, I, I try and be a little cautious, mm -hmm. you know, just because... I guess mainly like the Hawaiian stuff because a lot yeah. of people are more radical about the Hawaiian stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think I... I just in for me to in staying clean mm -hmm. like i try and keep my content clean i i try and put the, the stuff that i put out and the stuff i make i try and make it like pretty basic mm -hmm. so like anyone can laugh or kind of relate to it it doesn't go like 
so deep <laughs> into certain topics or subjects. Like I had, I had a lot of ideas when COVID was happening. I had a lot of like ideas for skits and, um, you know, I, I sat on them. I didn't, I, I never really did any of them. I think some of them were pretty funny, but I'd rather just, you know, stick with, with the basics. Mm -hmm. And in a way that challenge, that's more challenging. You know, it's, it's, it's challenging for me to, you know, keep things clean because that's a whole other like realm yeah. of, of comedy and ideas and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But, uh, and I've talked to a lot of people about that, you know, about this before, like even in the, in the YouTube days, like, oh, why don't you swear and, and things like that. And what I've heard a couple of times is like, well, like, what's the point? What's the point? Like, does that do anything? Does it, does it make it any more funnier or anything like that? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, like a lot of, a lot of people that watched my stuff are, you know, in their late twenties now, or like some in their thirties. Yep. But then I've gotten videos of kids in elementary school now, you know, with their backpack, like quoting a video mm -hmm. on their way to school. And I'm like, you know, you don't want them to just be dropping F bombs. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you not swear in general or this is just in the videos? Um, no, I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I swear here and there. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I kind of like, I mean, it, it just kind of depends. Yeah. And you know? who you're with, you know, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. It's all just being aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so um, what do you love about Hawaii the most? Um, I think it's it's really it's really the people, and you know, it, it's hard to say, but again, it's like if you know, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if 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 you're from here or if you get what the lifestyle is like here, um, you know, everyone is kind to one another. And a lot of people, if it's for a good cause, everyone supports one another. You know, the people have their differences and, and things like that. But for the most part, I think we're all just trying to be good people and do, you know, good things with our life while we're here and um and we're grateful to grow up in such a beautiful place and where you're growing up i you know i think for a lot of people you're you're taught a lot about respect here where i don't see that as much in other places mm -hmm. so i i think i really love that about it Nice. You know, like we're kind, we're respectful, you know, if you act dumb and you act dumb, but you can catch cracks. Yeah. But it's <laughs> like, for the most part, you know, I think the majority uh, of people here are able to, whether it's like speaking like pigeon mm -hmm. or, or not, we're, we're able to like listen to one another and, you know, not really create a lot of drama mm -hmm. where I think that's kind of the problem that you see with, with tourists. They come here and they, they think this or they say that or do this and not all of them, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know, they don't listen to you know the certain rules or read the signs and things like that yeah um and you know they come they don't go uh like i think what i'm trying to say is we kind of if we have a difference or any uh, differences or anything like that we come more at it with compassion mm -hmm. from a place of like compassion and try and understanding mm -hmm. for the most part yeah you know one of our past podcast guests says that um, 
Hawaii is a little bit less anonymous. Mm-hmm. So whereas like somewhere like LA, you know, you can do something to somebody and you you'll never see them ever, ever yeah. again. So you don't have to have that compassion or you, have, you don't necessarily have to be kind. But here you're going to see somebody or, you know, somebody's yeah. brother, uncle, auntie, sister, yeah. mata, father, you know, so that you don't want to do anybody wrong. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. I can, and because you go back and forth, you you see the difference. I do, yeah, day, right, yeah. I see so many differences. It's just like, it's mm. even just with. I mean, one of the things I find kind of interesting is when I come back here. If I, I've been gone for a little bit, everyone is talking about something ha- that had to do with the community, mm-hmm. whether you know, there was a a hurricane or something like that or something, I don't know, something going wrong. It it has to do with the community or like your neighbor or or the town, city or place, whatever. And then when I go to like LA, it's like, hey, there's a new iPhone, you see the new iPhone? Oh, there's the new, do you see the new movie? It's it's a lot more superficial maybe, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so. Interesting. Okay, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? I mean, it's hard, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, de- definitely here. Uh, but if you had to choose somewhere else? Somewhere else yeah. other other than here. Anywhere in the world, it could be anywhere. Anywhere. If I could live... It could be in Kyrgyzstan if you want. Kyrgyzstan? Oh, I do like Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> Go there all the time, every summer. Um... I it's 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 hard to say. I I I went to Switzerland once and it was really pretty and clean. Mm-hmm. So that would be yeah. cool. I heard in Iceland they don't have a lot of males there. There. Oh really? So they would pay you to live there because they need more males for the females. Oh. I I saw that. I mean I didn't like fact check it, so yeah, I could yeah. be wrong. But look, if anybody's looking to you know get paid for being a male. Yeah. Get paid for being a male. Go to Iceland. Yeah, yeah. Might be more kind of cold. Yeah, might be cold. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> no, yeah, uh, Switzerland could be cool. Yeah, maybe. that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. They, they have if I could do, if I could keep doing what I do. Yeah. Because that's the biggest thing. Do you think you, know? you, you would be where you're at now if you didn't grow up in Hawaii? No. Yeah? No, I think. You'd be a, a I think, tennis superstar, actually. No, no. <laughs> I think I, I mean, maybe. <laughs> but there there is something special about, um especially on the big island like there wasn't a lot for a kid to do mm-hmm. you know especially back then yeah so i i was good at entertaining myself and you know i was lucky lucky enough to have a camera um and you know i worked at that a lot and when i i started doing like school projects and the teachers saw that i had an interest in that i wasn't I was, I was, I guess, decent at doing little videos, so they encouraged it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of time to myself, you know. It's not like we had concerts all the time or we could drive to Disneyland. You had the same Pepper concert every yeah, weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Did you, do you have siblings? Uh, yeah, I have a stepbrother and stepsister, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Are you guys close? Uh, my stepsister, yeah, we're we're kind of close. She she was gone for most of um, uh, growing up, uh, my like high school and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But she's she's back on Big Island now. So nice. yeah, awesome, yeah. cool. All right, so uh, I want to know like who would your dream collab be? Dream collab. Yeah. <sighs> oh, let's see, let's see. Mm-hmm. Because I, I mean, you've worked with a lot of people. You, you've had Jason Momoa in some of your videos. Mm-hmm. You've been in his videos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I think... I don't know. I, I'm My head's going to Jim Carrey. <laughs> I <laughs> think... Be. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I've had a couple um, opportunities to meet him, but I, I chickened out. But I think, yeah, that would be cool. Do you think you chickened out because you didn't want to like ruin the image you have of him in your head? A little bit of that, mm-hmm. and also just it just didn't feel like the right time, mm. you know. Like yeah. he he a friend of mine produced. I guess it was kind of like a podcast talk mm-hmm. show, and he was a guest, and he was yeah. like, "Hey, you know, he's coming into the studio tomorrow. If you want to, you know, come by." And I was like, oh, "I don't know." 
Mm. I'd rather like run into him. And, yeah, more organic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, more organic. And you're just waiting there with a pen and paper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So. Uh, we're coming to the end of the podcast. I got a couple more questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, I want to know what um, is the most important lesson you've learned in your career. Most important lesson. Um, oh, I mean, it, it's it's a little complicated, maybe, but to always have fun. To always have fun. There's been so many times, especially with like jumping into movies and stuff now, that. I get so stressed out and overwhelmed with everything. I have to pause and think about like, why am I doing this? What, why was I doing this in the first place? Mm -hmm. You know? And it was because it was a lot of fun, you know, running around by myself or with my friends making silly videos and acting and like playing pretend and, and all that stuff. Like it's fun. And and I have to remind myself of that because it's so easy to get lost up in like, oh, well, you know, I have to do this in order to, to pay the bills um, you know, or make the, the client happy or, or whatever, you know. Uh, I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing. Like with whatever um, your profession is or your career goals, you know, if you're doing it because – at some point in your life, you decide like, this is what I want to do because I love doing this mm -hmm. and this is fun. You have to remember that when it gets hard, you have to remember why you started. Mm -hmm. um, and then try and get back to that place. And then some of that stress and overwhelming feeling will kind of lift, I think, sometimes. Yeah. In yeah. other words, never lose your dinosaur. Yeah. Never lose your dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Love that answer. Okay, well, what are you most proud of after of all the things you've done? Um, I mean, it's hard to say because, you know, no one, it's not out yet, but I I think hopefully this, this first movie at this point, and I know that will change. That answer will mm -hmm. always change. Um, but I think probably finally doing this thing that I've wanted to do my whole life almost, yeah. you know? To see it finally come to fruition, to see everybody react to it. Yeah. You know, receive I mean, it well, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were so many times on set where, you know, I just looked around at our, at our crew and cast and I was like, this is unbelievable that, you know, all these people came together to make this happen mm -hmm. and you know i have to believe that a lot of these people are here because they believed in me and they're you know they came to, together at this time to try and create this thing mm -hmm. it's it's you know beautiful yeah it's it was it's a crazy experience i'm so excited to watch it um, um lindsay's gonna come on the podcast at some point oh awesome yeah I, I, um, yeah she's awesome spoken with her so um, I'm excited to ask her what her experience uh, working with uh, yeah. on the $1 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. What is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? Hmm. Wish people knew about me that they don't. Um, that you just don't uh, speak milk all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's a big thing. I mean, so I, I live, I li part of the time I live in Kona. And part of the time I live in Culver City in L.A. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, most of the time I sound like this. <laughs> but it switches up, you know. Yeah, cold I mean, switching, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, and um, I, I do a lot of different weird voices too, you know. Mm -hmm. Whether it's to whoever I meet or by myself in, in the car or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, that's that's a, uh, and and I'm kind of mellow. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that that meet me, they're like, "Oh, I thought you'd be bouncing off the walls." And eh, 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 yeah, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm tired. It's chill. I'm tired right now. Just chill, corner boy. Yeah, yeah. It's like cruise. Yeah. 
<laughs> what are what are your like coping mechanisms? Like what what do you do in your free time to relieve the stress? Um so I exercise a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh I like work out almost every day, run almost every day. Um I I used I I like sneaking into uh, hotel hot tubs. <laughs> I do that all the time. Um <laughs> And One of the place to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um but I just got an inflatable one and so that's nice. So I don't Oh nice. I don't have to always do that. Uh because I, I, I heard on the news there's just one guy that keeps sneaking into the Kona hot tubs. Oh really? Yeah. You heard that? <laughs> <I was joking>. <laughs> oh <laughs> hey, almost got him. <laughs> I almost got him to admit it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um No, yeah, and I this year I started I got I made like my own cold plunge out of the. Oh, nice! Yeah, I hear that. It's really good. I yeah, so I one. I do that right when I wake up in the morning. I get into that. Oh, um, that's one way to wake up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy because it just for Shocks me. I don't even here. need coffee. Like Oof. I just wake up right away. Um, and then another thing I started doing more this this year was just getting in the ocean almost every day. Because I would work so much that, you know, out of a year, I probably would get in the ocean, like, maybe, like, three times. Mm. So, even if it's, like, for a minute or five minutes, I've been doing that. Because mm. that's another, it's all about, you know, taking moments to, like, pause. You know, I, I meditate here and there, too. Um, but even that can get hard sometimes because it's just like you have to mm -hmm. quiet the brain, you have to sit still. Um, so I find like doing those other things, r like running and exercising is also like a form of like meditation for me. Yeah, so, I, I agree. I think I can relate to that where it's like, it's hard to sit still because you have so much going on. Yeah. But when you're doing something active, you're still distracting your mind. Like for me, my thing is surfing. Yeah. Or like playing sports mm -hmm. because like, I, I don't have to think about all the other things I have to do. You're just thinking about one foot in front of the other, right. trying to get up on a wave. Like exactly. Like that. So, exactly. Yeah, it's almost like a form of meditation, but like a physical, active, dynamic yeah. form of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. All right, so um, besides the the movie coming out, what are your future goals? Like, what do you, what do you plan to goals? do? What's the, um, the dream? Yeah, I think it's really just continue working on my career uh, in a way where it can help others around me um, and others can benefit from it. So it's like, if I can, you know, continue to make either feature films or shows or whatever, and, you know, whether it's providing jobs or giving other people out here that might have not they want to step into the space, but they haven't yet mm -hmm. to give them an opportunity to, to see what it's like. Um, almost just like collaborating on a larger scale. I think that's kind of my goal. Like what I was saying before, you know, there really is in a, a platform where, you know, a lot of people who are interested in acting making funny videos, whatever it may be like in the creative space, it's hard because there's n it, that there's not a platform that can really allow you to do that and make a living. I mean, you know, you can get lucky, you can be very talented, you can hustle, you can work really hard. But I think there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they're just putting stuff out on social media, which is great. It gets at, it gets it out there, mm -hmm. but you have to, it, you have to also pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think if I can keep building this production company and somehow figure out how to make, you know, feature after feature and always have something in production, um, and always be creating where at the same time I'm working with with you know good creative people that that either haven't done it before or they do it on a smaller scale uh, i think that's that would be great mm. 
Awesome. And yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. I'm really excited to see uh, the the Adam Sandler kind of like to see you and the same crew in a bunch of different movies. Yeah. And it, even if it's like that stupid kind of comedy, I yeah. personally enjoy that stuff. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's yeah. the thing is like in the beginning here, this first one is is definitely comedy Adam Sandler style. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be doing, you know, a, like horror movies and mm, action movies. There might be like a drama movie, but yeah. um, but I think for the most part, yeah, I, I would like – I love comedy and I, I'll, I'll always try and put comedy into those other genres. Uh, but it would, I feel like there's been a huge drop off in comedy in, in the entertainment world, mm -hmm. you know, and I hope that it comes back. Yeah. It seems like they're just making normal movies, but adding comedic. That's what they're doing. Parts. Yeah. 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 For the that's most what part. I've been seeing even in like the action movies, right? Exactly. It's just like com comedic skits or yeah. Like scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So, it would be great to, to kind of see a comeback with yeah. that. Like a hangover. There hasn't been a movie since like Super Bad Hangover. Yeah, like it's in a while. No. Yeah. 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 I'm so I'm hoping that, you know, maybe there'll be more people wanting to see movies like that and stuff. Yeah. So. Awesome. Cool. All right. So this is the moment that everybody's been waiting for. What is your life hack? Life hack. Oh. Oh, I forgot about this one. <laughs> you know what I was going to do? <laughs> I forgot to do it. I was going to be like, oh, this is it. And I was going to show my phone. And then it, I was going to have a ser the life cereal and then chop it with a machete. <laughs> Dang. I forgot about that. Oh, well, I'm going to have to bring you back in a couple of years. And yeah. you got to prepare that one. <laughs> um, I mean, one life hack. There was another one, though. Oh, no, no. I remember what it was. You know, I said I, I like ice cream. I was eating a lot of ice cream. Um, maybe a lot of people know this, but if you get that kind of the kind of low cal ice cream, you can eat it like a push pop. You don't need a, a spoon or a fork or anything. Uh, <laughs> like that. You can get. Yeah, you can literally like just squeeze the bottom of it. Just kind of go like that a little bit, and then it'll start to come up like a push pop. Push yeah. pop. And I did that because I was eating so much ice cream that I'd like be driving and I didn't want to, you have to like keep your eye on the road and, um, can't use a spoon. Right. So mm -hmm. I just like do that at a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's good. That's good. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Especially because you have to eat it quick before it melts. Exactly. That's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hot out here, you know? Yeah. Oh, especially recently. It's been so hot. Yeah. Yeah. Especially so, yeah. in Kona. Yeah. So pints yeah. of ice cream can be push pops. <laughs> you just got to, you know, you just got to believe. Use your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> right on. All right. So all right, I got my last five rapid fire questions. Okay. Okay. Favorite snack slash guilty pleasure. <laughs> push pop ice cream. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's where I was going. The in. Flintstone push pop ones were classic. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, yeah, any kind of like ice cream with peanut butter in it. Peanut butter ice cream. Yeah, Anything? any kind. I don't know if I had peanut butter ice like cream. Like Reese's Pieces. Oh, yeah, Reese's yeah, yeah. Ice cream or whatever. That's good. Oh, I just had something that was super good. Um, I don't know, I like the Kailua Monkey from Lani Kai Juice, the smoothie. Uh, oh, yeah, I've had that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. really good. It's peanut butter. But there's something else I just had, and it tasted like, like it was peanut butter. But oh, I can't remember what it was. It was really good. Oh. Yeah, anything, any like peanut butter smoothie or ice cream, I think. Yeah. I can't remember, but okay. Uh, favorite actor? I'm, I feel like you're gonna say Jim Carrey, so maybe say a favorite actress. Well, that all that all that always changes too. Mm. Um, oh, come on, come on. oh, it's so hard! It's so hard. <laughs> or favorite movie? You can choose. A uh, favorite movie is uh, Castaway. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, yeah. You're going for the Castaway look right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> nice. Okay, favorite restaurant. Favorite restaurant. Oh. oh, I mean, I guess it's kind of a restaurant. Hayashi's, you make the roll. Hayashi's in Kona. Exactly. You ever been there? I Best probably sushi have. World. I, no. I just don't remember. I don't go there Best sushi. Too often. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a really good one in Kona that we'd always go to. Shajima, Shima, something. 
Can't remember. No. Rough. Okay. Anyways, favorite comedian. Favorite comedian. Oh, that changes a lot too. Yeah. Um. Tashima. Sorry, that's what I'm thinking. Tashima's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, that Tashima. place is good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, favorite comedian. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts and, and I've been listening to a lot of Bobby Lee podcasts, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard a lot of his stand up. Mm. So. There's a lot out there. I used to like Dane so Cook many. growing up. Yeah. Dane Cook was big growing up. Um, no, I think Dave Chappelle, I think. Oh yeah. 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 If he doesn't get canceled for the 20th time. I know, I know. <laughs> it's just like how he can make everything like, oh, also have like this crazy meaning or whatever, you know? Yeah. Did you see that one? I think it was a podcast that he was on or it was a clip where he was talking about um, how I think somebody was going to like beat him up or something. My brother showed it to me, but basically it was like this kind of crazy story. Uh -huh. But then it ends with this amazing message that yeah. he has. You're yeah. like, hold. Oh, it's like so it's powerful. almost like a TED talk. Yeah, you yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. It is cool how he how he's able to do that. Okay, uh, favorite YouTuber. Favorite YouTuber. Um, past or present? Past or present? Um, favorite YouTuber. I mean, just because he's also a good friend, Kasim G. Mm. Yeah. Nice. And he's in one million dollar too. He does oh, a no great way. job. Yeah. Where is he from? Uh he's from LA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does he still do YouTube? Uh he does he hosts uh shows on uh G four oh, TV. Okay. Yeah. And well, then he has G4. a podcast called uh, Pajama Pants. Pajama Pants. Yeah. Nice. Gotta check it out. All right. Well, yeah, mahalo for all these answers and for yeah. coming here. It's been really fun. And Anytime. It's uh, it's so cool. The coolest thing about my job is I get to meet all these cool people yeah. like you and yeah. the people I've seen my whole life. So this is, I'm stoked. Yeah, me and too, And we got man. some good food and we can finish it right after this. Yeah, let's, go, let's <laughs> jump in. Yeah, so you have anything else to add? Um, if not, uh, where can we find you? um alex underscore farnham on instagram that's probably the best thing for all the updates mm -hmm. with everything that's usually what i'm i've been using so mm -hmm. updates for the movies and all that stuff will all be on there right on yeah. okay well mahalo alex for joining us on the hoiverse podcast check us out on hoiverse.com the best place to support local spread aloha be kind to one another and mahalo for listening to us today new episodes every thursday so make sure you follow us and leave a review I'm your host, Kamaka, and you'll hear me next time on the Hawaii Verse Podcast. Ahui ho. Ahui ho.